In this episode, I'm gonna cover some tips on using the Remove tool in Photoshop, and I'm gonna do so by showing a few different examples. The first example is here where there are some items that we can see to the outside that would be best removed. This was for an architectural shoot. And so once again, being paid by the hour for these type of gigs, you can charge extra for removing these and they won't take you as much time if you use the right techniques using the remove tool compared to some other methods, which I will show because we're gonna see some other stuff that won't work out quite as well here. We can see trying to remove this, it can work, but there's some tips to using the remove tool that would help it do better, but you can still use some traditional methods that will do quite well. We're gonna work through then a third example, removing these shampoo bottles up here. And if not done correctly, it's gonna turn into a hot mess. With the remove tool, I'm gonna to show that. Then I'm gonna go into here here, this is a very tough example because as we're going to be removing this vase from the counter, not all is as it seems because there's some things in the background that are gonna give us problems. There's reflections and there's shadows and other stuff going on. And then what seems like a very simple remove, which is just this little bit of a, it was a step stool that was in this laundry room. You would think that'd be easy to remove with the remove tool, not exactly. So I'm gonna cover that, some tips on using that as well as some other methods as well. Now, just because you can remove something doesn't mean that you should. As you know, there are property affecting items in real estate photography that should not be removed, but in cases like this where it does behoove you to remove them, then you can always charge extra for it. But there's another rule of thumb that I'd like to point out, and that's a simple rule now that we have AI assisting us in this, and even before then, with just some of the standard removal tools that you could use in Photoshop, is that sometimes it's easier to remove it than to move it. For instance, when you're on site and you see something that should be removed, you really wanna go in there and remove all that. For instance, with this pool, I could go out here and remove this stuff out of the way, but quite honestly, why? It's just going to be dripping water all over the place as I move it, and I still have to go outside and take care of that. And it's just more time consuming, where if I can just set up, if I can shoot, and then I can go, and then I know it's just gonna take me a few seconds of removal in Photoshop, once again then, that rule, sometimes it's easier to remove it than it is to move it. So anyways, let's move on into these examples. Now everybody will sing the praises of the remove tool and how great it is and it's going to change editing forever and that's true to some degree, but if it's only used correctly because it will fail sometimes. I'm gonna show you how to work around that. So if you're not familiar with the remove tool, it's up here and it's gonna be under this. If you click and hold right here under this toolbar, then you'll see spot healing brush. brush. There's the remove tool, patch tool, things you might be familiar with. Well, the remove tool is right there. So that's what we wanna select. Let's start over here though, I'll zoom in, and we've got this basketball court that's outside in this yard, and it's got all these basketballs. So let's say that we want to remove that. Let's zoom in 100%, and if I were to use the remove tool to do this, I could have some problems, and I'll show you why. First thing, the rule, no matter what, using this, I find it is best to leave sample all layers and remove after each stroke unchecked. That'll allow you to do more refined selections because this so far with the remove tool is an unmodifiable selection. So with other selection tools, for instance, like Polygon, Quick Select, you can select multiple areas you can remove from the selection. For instance, if we were to use the standard Quick Selection tool, I've got an add, I've got a minus, I've got the standard select. So I can modify the selection as I want to, but as soon as I select the uh, remove tool, there is none of that. So I'm really left just to what I'm going to be brushing in. So let's take this brush and let's say that right here, I'm using a decent size uh, brush. You can see it's 100 here and I'm using the bracket keys on the keyboard to do this. And if I go around, which the remove tool is known for having these good refined edge detections, that's one of its benefits. Well, I'll go in here and do this and you can see I was doing it in pieces so I can get the selection that I want. Then what I do is you can see it's not doing anything yet until I either press the checkbox or I press enter on my keyboard. Once I do, and when it does its fill, you can see that is a terrible, terrible job. The reason being is it's using some of the logic from content aware and other type of fills. So it's not really doing a good job. It picked up the cabinet. So let's just undo that. 
Now, another thing you should do is to make this non-destructive so you don't have to try to work around stuff like that. Take whatever it is that you're working on and duplicate that layer or stamp it. In this case, we just have one layer. Let's do Control J and we've got this duplicate layer. Now, let's go in here close. This is gonna be beyond 100%, but we'll be able to get more refined. And let's choose that Remove Tool again. And this time, we'll use the brush smaller. And also what we'll do, and this is a big key, is we're gonna do this in steps. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of a brush here for it. I am gonna overlap onto this area, and then I'm gonna come down just across here. And let's try that first. I'll hit Enter and see what it does for Remove. And it did a good job because it didn't try to tackle too much. We'll do the same thing. You take little bits of it here at a time, do that much, hit enter, see what it does. Good job. And then we'll also then do down here on these balls on the rack, hit enter and see how that does. Okay, looking pretty good. If we go and zoom out to 100% and we go back and forth, we can see that those balls are removed. We can go in further and remove the rack if we want to, but it's time to move on to the rest of the example here. Out here at the pool, we've got this uh, floaty out here, this boogie board, and a ball over here really should be removed. So for uh, this particular architectural shoot, so in here, I'll take the remove tool and I'll see if it can get that whole area. And we'll just hit enter. This area I'm not too concerned with then, it did an okay job. It's really not that great, but you can go back and forth and see it's good because there weren't any edges. But let's move over here to now this basket. And this is where we'll once again have somewhat of a problem. So if I were to take the remove tool and I just brush around this whole area just kind of roughly, then I could have some issues, especially if I fill in more than what's needed. See how I'm going around here, picking out quite a bit. So if you get sloppy with that, and then I'll hit enter to do its fill, then I'm gonna get a different type of result than what I may want. You can see down here on the pool, that's really not a natural edge of the pool. As we go back and forth on this, we can see why. See how this was all covered up when we turn our layer back on. I could clone some of that out, but it just wasn't accurate. So once again, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna back out of using that remove tool, which is here in the history, and I'm gonna use a bit of a smaller one, and especially at the problem area, I'm just gonna do that first, and I'm gonna do this net, and let's see how well that does. Once again, just taking this in pieces, just the net first, hit enter, and see how that works. And that is a very clean edge. It filled it in exactly. Once again, this is what it was before, and this is with it after. Now I can take this in better chunks. So I'll take, for instance, the base of this, and I'll go up just a little bit on that, hit enter, and watch it do its remove. And not bad, it actually filled the straight line of the shadow where we needed it. We'll just do that little bit right there. We'll hit enter, and then we can do the rest of it. Now this is gonna get tricky out here. That was an easy one but there's so much here. Will it be able to figure out this furniture? Probably not, but really from the distance, it's not going to really bother me. Now, once again, I don't have that remove after each stroke turned on, so I can get really well refined in here. And Also, by using this in chunks, because you don't have any type of selection modification as you do in other tools, then you don't wanna to have to start all over. By having this just in chunks, I can do this. If I didn't like it, I do an undo. But in this case, I like my selection, so I'll hit enter and let the remove tool do its things to fill that in. And it's okay. Let's take a look at it, what it was before, and this is what it was after. And I could try to touch up the furniture, but quite honestly, when we zoom out here, this is still better than what we had here. Now, this is a great example, and I show how to remove these type of uh, pool filters, and I've got this in my expert editing course. Talk about the remove tool as well as other options to remove items because there's more than one way to do this. And if you're not familiar with my courses, by the way, I do have courses on pro interiors, on doing expert editing, on also pro exteriors. I've got links to that down in the description for this video. And as you may know too, I have best selling books on real estate photography, and I have links to those as well. So let's just zoom in here though and see what would happen once again if I take this in too big of a chunk. 
and I'll just take the remove tool. I press J by the way on my keyboard because this was already once selected. You could also hit shift J and cycle through the various tools, but we'll go back here to the remove tool. Now in here, if I say that I wanna remove this and I wanna remove this part of the hose and out here, I'm gonna hit enter and see what it does. And it does a kind of an okay job. You can see though, this entire line is missing. Let's back out of that. And that's no different than if I had used the spot healing brush, which is also under those tools right here. And with the spot healing brush, we'll zoom in here so we can see a little bit more of what's going on. If I were to use the spot healing brush and go around here and I'll do the exact same strokes where I was coming over here, grabbing this and just let loose of it, you can see it still messed up that line right there. So that was still uh, not really all that great, but this actually did better than what the remove tool did. So let's back out of there. Let's now, as we should always do, let's duplicate our layer so we can have something to compare it to and be able to then recover from also. So this will be non-destructive. So if I were to just to take the spot healing brush and if I were to do the same trick of just a little bit at a time and I just go right outside of where we were having that problem area, it did an okay job. It's not that great. You can see it still uh, missed some of that line there. If I use the remove tool on that, I should be able to get better results. And once again, it's because I'm taking small chunks. That's the principle here. So I'll take that small chunk, hit return. It did a pretty good job. It's just basically a different fill. A Little bit of the hose right there, we'll get rid of that. And then we'll move over here and see if it retains then that line reflection. And it did an okay job, but once again, it's still filling in some stuff here. So now I can go and through and just grab all the rest of this. So I'll do that real quick and not bore you to death, so I'll speed this up. So now you can see I have all that selected in one selection with the remove tool. If I then press enter on that and let it do its remove thing, it did an okay job. There's still a few things left that could be touched up. But let's try that a little bit differently. Instead of using the remove tool, let's use the spot healing brush up here. So I'll do that. Once again, I'll just speed through here. And as I get to the end, then we'll go ahead and slow it down and take a look and see what it does. Okay, here we go, speeding it up. So I had to make one continuous spot healing brush because I have to now let loose of this and we'll see what it does. And it got a better job. Using the spot healing brush, which has been around forever, took that pool filter hose completely out. There's a couple spots that are still left, but once again, this is a very quick tool. It has a very low impact. You can see as I'm doing this, this is rapid. Using the remove tool has a much longer wait time. So you can see how rapid this is. Everything I do, boom, boom, brush over it, no problem. So let's back out of here and let's just do that again using the remove tool. Just to show you an example. So for the speed, so if I go in here and if I reuse the remove tool, then yeah, I could go in here and then wait. I hit enter, it has to do its thing. Then I go and I do this section, maybe some of that, and I have to hit enter. And every time I do, there's a couple second delay. So when you're doing a large job like this, sometimes it's just not worth it to use the remove tool. Sometimes using the spot healing brush is just much better. So I found when it comes to doing stuff like this, where there's lines involved is where this really gets tricky for the remove tool and the spot healing brush just works better. You can see this is lines here because of just, that's all we're removing is a hose. It's just a bunch of lines, yeah, a couple little chlorine filters, whatever. But also when it comes to removing cords. So if you have cords on the floor, a phone cord on the wall, something like that, it's not a property affecting item, then I found that the spot healing brush does work better. But one place where the spot healing brush really will struggle is when you have a large area like this. These aren't lines and it's not a small object. Let's duplicate this layer here. We'll do control J. Let's zoom in here just a little bit. Now there's traditional ways to try to do this. And we'll just do, for instance, just to show the comparison, if I use the spot healing brush. So if I did that and I go around here and I'll just select this stuff just real quick, just to see what it would do. Well, we already know it's not gonna be as good as the remove tool because this isn't a line. So there's a 
lot more involved and you can see it got down into the shelf. It tried to sample the, uh, the squeegee over here. So that's just not very good. Content aware fill isn't gonna do any better. Now, we'll go in here just a little bit closer. Let's go into 100%. Now let's use the remove tool. Now the remove tool will have a problem if you're in a hurry and you say, I wanna grab this whole section here and I wanna remove it and you're just being real sloppy and removing it like that. See, I'm grabbing more than just what I'm trying to remove. When I hit enter, what does it do? It did an okay job, but it also got some of this down here. So it's already better though than if we had used the spot healing brush. But what I would recommend doing is use a smaller brush in this case for the remove tool and be more precise. So let's back out of that and we'll just use then a smaller brush on this, on the remove tool. And once again, I can get really close and refined here because I'm not worried about releasing. Like the spot healing brush, I don't have much choice there, but since I have here on the remove tool the option to remove after each stroke and that's unchecked, then I've got a lot of control on making this selection. I really hope that in future versions of Photoshop, they have where you can refine the selection a little bit more, and I'm sure they will. This was obviously a lot of intelligence that went into this, but even here, you can see I went a little too far. Hopefully that will be okay, because I can't remove that from my selection. But by taking it in pieces, you can see I'm just dragging, clicking, clicking, dragging, and I'm doing that until I fill in these bottles with just a little bit of overlap to make sure I get across their edges. Now when I hit enter, we've got a pretty good clean fill. We'll zoom out here. We can see then this is after, this is before, and there's a little bit of stuff going on here. I really don't care for that shadow, and there's a lot of things you could do on that to fix that. And yeah, you could use the remove tool, but a quicker way to do that, either spot healing brush or another one of those tools you might be familiar with is the patch tool. So if I take the patch tool up here, and that's the one that was here, and you just draw, I'm just dragging, it's like a lasso, I'm dragging it around this area. And then I dragged it over to just some other area, it's just gonna use its pattern. Like for instance, if I go down here, it's gonna use that pattern. I can control D to deselect. That did an okay job, but if I want a better matching pattern, then I take that selection and move it to something closer, like maybe over here, maybe even just right next to it. You can see how it's trying to line that up and did a pretty good job. I could still do some cloning, whatnot that I needed down there. But the idea here is that even just by using the remove tool on this, it was able to remove those shampoo bottles. And by the way, I show how to use all these various tools, especially also something known as boundary editing, which would do a much better job here to clean this up in cloning while protecting the exterior space. Something that I show in the expert editing course that I have, and once again, links to that down in the description for this video. Okay, let's take a look at this next example. Now, this is really tricky. Now, love this kitchen, and I did love this right here, but also, it's something that once you get back to a client, they may say, yeah, that's good, but could you just remove it? Well, supposedly, the remove tool will do a fantastic job, but let's take a look at that. I'm gonna do Control J to duplicate that layer. We'll zoom in here 100%. Now, I'll take the Remove tool by grabbing it again up here, and in here, I'll do as I should and know that I should select around this area first. I'm gonna get the edges with a brush, and once again, because I'm able to select a little bit at a time, that's fine, and you don't wanna do the shadows yet. I'm just gonna do the vase first, just so I can get something here, and the reason why I'm doing all of the vase instead of in pieces is because there's a lot of intersections here that are going on here with the counter, the backsplash, the cabinets, and this. I wanna make sure that its algorithm catches those particular things, and this isn't a very big item. Okay, now with that selected, I'll press enter and let it do its remove thing. Now, that did a pretty good job, and you can see here that it's not bad. A little bit of a, a fault down here, and that could be fixed with the clone tool. But you can see here that now I've got a problem because it blocked these knives over here. Now, if I had really thought about this ahead of time, I could have just moved this item or moved this item. Well, now that it isn't and it is in there, I can keep going with the remove tool. 
So I'll grab the remove tool and I'll make it just a little smaller and I'll grab this, what's left of anyways, this knife block. So I'll select that, hit enter and see what it does. And I'm still struggling here, struggling to get this just right. It's just not removing everything. And this is then where boundary editing comes in and other types of edits that I may need to do. On the remove tool now though, I can use it probably to a pretty good degree to remove this reflection. So I'll go back here to our remove tool and I'm gonna select now this reflection. And I'm gonna grab the whole reflection at once, just going around its interior, around its border, and then I'll hit enter and hopefully, and it did, it removed it and it put in a nice amount of grain. I've got some weird stuff going on here and that's because also they had these sagging uh, lights back here. They're under cabinet little LEDs and they weren't installed very well. So anyways, those are reflecting in here. So we'll also just go across here and hit enter. And does that do a pretty good job? Not really because it didn't really mimic the pattern very well. Now it did catch the reflection of the cabinets and that was good, but let's go back. You see the cabinets are still right here. This would be where instead of using the remove tool, I would think about the patch tool. So let's grab the patch tool again and let's grab this area right around there. Now let's drag that to another area of the counter and see if that works. And we can grab it down here. We can grab it from over here. We'll just grab it right there and see how that works. And we'll do control D to deselect. So that filled in the pattern, but I still got some strange stuff going on here, which means I'd probably want to grab that selection and also do a patch on that. So that's not too bad. We've got a little bit of a line going on here. It could be a reflection from something else. But if we zoom out here, we can see it's, it's okay. It did an all right job, but using the remove tool alone isn't going to get rid of all these shadows very easily, all the reflections. And there's still more boundary editing that would have to be done over here. But sometimes with the patch tool, it's very fast. So you can do like what I'm doing here, which is just selecting stuff, moving it, control D, select again, move it to another spot, control D. And I show how to do stuff like this in the pro editing course and the expert editing course. So you have a variety of stuff because even though AI is fantastic and everybody's singing the praises of the remove tool, it is not perfect. So it's good to learn all the options you have available to you to edit out objects. And that leads us to this little thing here. Now, this is probably so annoying because it's just a laundry room. It doesn't mean much, but it still has something that I thought, well, it'd be easy to remove. I'll just leave this here. I don't want to go in there and edit it. So let's do some standard stuff here. First, let's try that remove tool. Let's see what happens. If I use the remove tool and I'll select this, and I believe this was a chair that was just leaning up against the wall. So I'll select that. And okay, that's all selected. And now I'll hit enter, see what it does. Then it basically did an awful job of trying to fill that in. So it really doesn't do us much good, the remove tool. Let's take a look at some other options. So another one that has been used, you might be very familiar with it, is using content aware fill. So let's take our lasso tool and let's go around here. I'm just gonna draw a, a, a polygon tool, polygon lasso tool. And in here, then I can go up to the edit menu. I can go to fill and make sure that content aware is selected and I'll press okay and see what it does. It did the exact same thing, if not better than the remove tool did, but there's still another option. So instead of doing content aware fill, while well, we have this selected, we can try something else. We can also go up to edit content aware fill in this menu, which brings up this window. Now, if you'll notice, it's selecting a whole bunch of stuff. And to allow us, it says, this is what I think you would use to fill this. It might be right. In this case, I don't like it. So I'm gonna go over here and that's auto is usually selected. You can select custom. And then it'll give you this little warning. Don't worry about it, say okay. And then here you've got a little brush. What we wanna do here is use this brush and you can select right up to that line because it won't allow you to go into the selection you're trying to fill. And we'll use, just use the selection here. Just try to use what you can find here to fill this selection. Once you do then, you can press okay. Now, 
it did an okay job. It's probably no better, no worse than what it did doing the other type of content aware fill or the remove tool. But here's something unique it did. It made a new layer. And now we can shut that layer off. We can turn that back on. And it's just this little area that it filled. That's all that it is. You can see if I turn the other layer off underneath of it, that's all that that was. So I have a little bit more flexibility on how I want to edit by doing my own controlled content aware fill. So obviously the remove tool is a very useful tool, but that's all that it is. It's just one of many tools that you have in Photoshop and also Lightroom Classic and other software so that you can do your editing in a more streamlined fashion and do it quicker in some cases, but it is not a one all do all edit tool and neither will the generative AI fill be a panacea for everything that you need for object removal and editing. It's good to know the full gamut of what you have have available in editing tools so that depending on the situation that you're up against, you can make the decision, you can decide, use your ability with using these tools to do the correct object removal and editing overall.